Good morning. It, it is such a thrill and honor to be here in this, um, in this room with such amazing people. And I would like to start by saying that I have the best job on the planet. I get to feed children every day. And I know that I share that passion with you. Um, Burlington is a pretty unique place when I am fortunate enough to present on Burlington nationally. Um, I refer to it as Shangri-La because all of the pieces really have come together. We are in a community that really does um, embrace food security, embraces our ag um, departments and committees and farmers, and really recognizes that the community spends so much on education, therefore it's, it, it's incredibly important that the kids are prepared and ready to learn. Um, the state of Vermont does have about one in five children that suffer from hunger um, or the, the um, food insecurity that hunger sometimes brings. And Burlington is higher than that, three in five. So when I began this, um, when I began my job, the most important thing to me was that we create an opportunity for kids to maintain their food access and make sure that kids are getting that access in a way that is socially acceptable and socially responsible. Um, the things that Burlington has done around child nutrition and in a way to change some of the, the, the norms, um, you know, it kind of bounced back to me when the young lady was saying we need to just change the rules, the woman at the microphone. And my motto has always really been more about asking forgiveness instead of permission. And I would like to give you guys all that ability as well. So moving forward, really, just try to change the paradigm by asking um, forgiveness instead of permission. We also... I'm blessed by having an incredible um, leader. Uh, Jeannie Collins and the school board in Burlington have really opened up and allowed me to, to spread my wings and allow my, my team, a um, couple of which um, are here today, to really move forward in what we're doing and recognizing that a child who is hungry not only doesn't learn, but really takes away from the ability for the other students to learn. Um, one of the things um, that was said earlier about the, the session in California, how do we get, how do we reduce the dropout rate? Well, the, another sad statistic is that the vast majority of those students that drop out are also from low-income homes and are accessing our meals. So not only are we uh, creating a child who's not educated, we're also putting somebody out there who has lost their access to, um, to, to healthy meals on a daily basis. One of the things that we thought was really important was to come up with a mission. My clock's not running, so I'm not starting, right? <laughs> okay, it's not running. Um, one of the things that we thought was valuable was coming up with what it is that we believe and what we would use that would, that would really shape our, our movement. And this is several years old. The Farm to School program in Burlington started in 2003, long before um, maybe there were other Farm to School programs operating. I mean, now it's in, it's in 50 states, it's all over the country, it is really the, the catchphrase. Um, when we began, we looked at it as an opportunity to connect our community and our kids. And this is the, the, the mission statement that we chose, um, a farm to school program that connects students and their families with whole, fresh, and local foods to improve the health of our community. Because we knew that just feeding our kids better wasn't the answer. It was a really great start, but it wasn't the answer. We knew that the kids in our schools would grow to become the city councilors, would grow to become taxpayers and voters, and would have to impact our communities in a, in a better and more positive way by keeping our ag open, by keeping our farms working, and by buying local product. Um, I don't need to tell all of you that Vermont leads the nation in buying local food, in CSAs, in farmers markets. This is not by accident. This is the kind of people that we have the amazing privilege to live with and live around. Those are our neighbors. We need to really take the opportunity to um, harness that energy. Um, in schools, again, um, I really loved, I loved everything about the morning so far, but um, one of the things I really loved was the, the only tray of food that we've seen so far, which was a uh, cheeseburger and french fries and a uh, fountain drink. Um, uh, that's not to say that those things are evil, but it really is the, the image that people conjure up in their heads when they're speaking of or speaking about child nutrition and school nutrition. Um, can I see a show of hands of anybody who's had school lunch in the last 30 days? Awesome. So there's my team over there, the ones with the hands up. Um, I think that it's incredibly important that if you can, please go to your local schools and try the school meals that are out there. I mean, Burlington is an, a shining example, yes, but Vermont is leading the nation in the uh, transformation of school meals. School meals is not about Jamie Oliver you know, pounding his fist on a table and getting people um, 
I feel, incorrectly involved. Our role as uh, food activists and, and food security supporters is to get in our schools and see the positive work that's being done and help our schools create some of the things that I'm going to talk about for the next nine minutes. Um, so one of the things that's really important is giving the students the ability to make the choices themselves. Often what school meals is, is you walk through a line, you get the food thrown on the tray, and you sit down. Part of the challenge around that is we have 21 minutes to feed our kids. We have 200 children that need to go through, and they, uh, the clock starts when they're in their classroom walking towards us. And that is something that really often gets overshadowed around what school meals are, are up against. Um, it isn't really about the food, it's more about the structure, more about the programming, more about how it fits into the local school day. Um, this is not unique. This was not a staged photo. Uh, this is something that happens in Burlington all the time now, because when we started working with our kids about school change, they wanted more choices and they wanted to feed themselves. Um, we are a self-serve organization. We have unlimited fruits and vegetables offered. Um, so again, we are bound by some federal regulations, but the ones that we can get around, massage or I don't want to say ignore because there might be USDA people here, but <laughs> the ones that we can work best to our advantage, you know, is are ones that we have to. Um, the tray on the bottom, um, those were that was all local food that we were able to put on our tray in October of last year. And what that means to me is that we're asking community members to support our programs, and in turn, we are supporting our communities as well. Um, very, very important that the students are involved in the conversations. I mean, so much about education is um, the sit and get. You know, we, we talk at people. Um, but the child nutrition program is really unique. Um, I come from a background of hotel and restaurant management, and we often have an opportunity to converse with our customers. And it's really uh, important that we do, because if we do not, um, those customers will choose to go somewhere else. Um, a lot of Vermont schools are faced with open campus. A lot of Vermont schools are faced with you know, kids bringing their own meals or meals that are being sold um, by folks other than the child nutrition program. Um, also, child nutrition meals are funded by a person, many of which are in the room right now, who don't go to the school to try the lunches out. So it's really difficult for us to connect with parents often that don't eat the meals and all they have is the stereotype in their heads, the things that are making the news around child nutrition and school meals. So it's very, very important that we figure out a way to get kids involved in our programming. On that slide, you'll see um, we, we converted to Vermont beef wherever we could, um, and children did work with us to create the recipe that we are using now when we can get that product to us. Um, the adults in the photos are Champlain College students. Um, Champlain College, UVM, um, and the Fletcher Allen in Burlington have really been huge supporters of our programs, and it's really important that we reach out to the folks in our communities that want to make these programs better because they are um, a resource that I think goes unused too often. Also, when we talk about child nutrition and school meals, we don't look at what the possibilities are of things we can do outside of our schools. Um, we have an amazing team in Burlington, and again, I think it goes back to the leadership that I've been able to work under in which we're given the opportunity to spread our wings and really try new things and different things. But what th these, all these photos are are opportunities that we have taken outside of our school. Um, we work really hard every year um, on the Vermont Junior Iron Chef, a competition that allows 80 schools to participate, I'm sorry, 80 teams to participate um, in a child nutrition farm to school program from a school that maybe doesn't have the same resources as Burlington. You know, so we are able to reach out and try to share some of the resources that we have. Um, also, reaching out to local restaurants. Um, we have half a dozen restaurants here in town um, and I know that this is a model that can be replicated in other communities that have a day that highlights the work, the amazing work that schools are doing and how they can contribute back. And if we can get local community members and local businesses to help and to really shine the light on the positive things that are happening in schools right now, it really does then become a community event. And we have to move our school meal programs out into the community. It isn't right in my mind that when people are talking about things happening at school, they're talking about football and basketball. Both wonderful, amazing things, but really, we need to be talking about the things that are happening in our schools that impact the majority of our kids. Education, naturally, we need to talk about outside the school walls, but nutrition is something that really, I think, gets ignored. It gets ignored um, in the budget line unless it's being talked about being cut, and it gets ignored outside um, or dismissed 
as something that is you know, maybe a necessary evil. Because again, the only picture in our mind about school lunch are the ones that we see or the stereotypes that we keep in our heads. Um, the, the food fight model for us has been really great. We try very hard to connect with the kids at their level. It's very valuable to, I, I don't want to say be hip, because it doesn't sound hip, right? So I want to make sure, though, that we can connect with the kids and they feel comfortable coming to talk to us. You know, they really need to know that we are on the same level and that we are willing to work with them and to continue to talk to them and make the changes for the program that best fits them. A strong community and a strong local food system will only work to enhance a school meal program. There is no two ways around it. I think that if a community like Burlington, like um, many other communities in Vermont, if they support and um, respect the farmers in their communities, as we all do, then it's a perfect match to get our communities and our schools together around child nutrition and around local food. Just, you know, the two things that I chose, I mean, we have 23 farmers we're buying from right now. 35, maybe 40% of our overall food budget is being sent back to Vermont producers, Vermont growers, Vermont processors. Um, when I started doing this, they told me that we couldn't do that because our growing season was too short, we couldn't, it's too much work, there's too many government regulations. Um, I'm proud to say that Vermont has led the charge in changing regulations that have kept other schools and other communities from buying more stuff locally. So I think that things can happen and things can change. Um, the Arethusa carrots is one of my favorite examples. We needed carrots that kids could pick up and eat. Um, that wasn't a typical size carrot that Thomas grew. And he simply put his carrots in the ground closer together, the carrots grew smaller. <laughs> kids can eat them better. You know, that's not rocket science. But I'll say that some of the smartest people I've ever met are farmers, right? Of course. And uh, the, the question is, how do I get more carrots that in a bag that kids can eat? I need 20 in a bag. You know, that was the result. And it's pretty darn simple. You know, we've got to just look at the size of our problems and really peel the layers back until we can create a solution that, that, that meets our goal. Our goal is that kids eat better and kids feel better about the foods they're eating and that our community is able to support the farmers, the growers, and the processors while at the same time our kids are getting a better meal to eat. Um, community support is incredibly important. Um, a slide that's missing here is our amazing um, connection with Boys and Girls Club. I mean, we are providing meals to Boys and Girls Club. We have a wonderful representative here from Boys and Girls Club, a, a, an employee that is shared between the school district and Boys and Girls Club. Who would have thunk it? You know, same kids, substantially the same food, the same system. Why not share the same person? Doesn't that make sense? Well, I didn't know that it was a unique idea. Um, but clearly, it's working. We're feeding 100 children, and 100 additional children suffer at the Boys and Girls Club every night. And it is a model that's, that's replicable, a model that is being now shared with Boys and Girls Clubs of America as something that can work and a way to connect with schools. Shelburne Farms, um, the, the picture there, we, we had a cheese day. I thought, how, how great would it be to bring our staff into Shelburne Farms, um, understand the program around Shelburne Farms, what's happening, and then allow the staff to learn the work that goes into creating food. Um, we did it with cheese, but the, the, I think the important thing is that people don't respect the work that farmers put into creating food for us. Um, city market. Uh, again, a lot of uh, communities in Vermont have co-ops. Um, city market does a cooking class in our kitchens twice a month. Um, we don't charge them to use the kitchen. We do provide um, an employee there to oversee the kitchen. And then the employee is able to take on what is being taught. And then hopefully bring that information back to the school the following uh, day, week, month to create recipes and meals that meet what City Market has done. City Market's goal around the cooking classes is to create low income, or I'm sorry, low cost food to help low income families and new Americans in, in, in meeting their nutritional needs for their families. Social media, um, when child nutrition, or I'm sorry, when farm to school started just, you know, 10 years ago for us and maybe 10 years ago in general, there was no social media. Um, but now we get more of our feedback and we are able to put out more of our information on Facebook and through our electronic newsletters than we were ever able to do in the paper form. I mean, all I remember is trying to create a paper, um, a, a paper newsletter and it was just a nightmare. And then you'd count the ones that on, on the way home that were on the, on the street or in the grass. You know, this is an amazing, amazing thing that I think more schools should take advantage of. I think the way we communicate with people today is substantially different than the way we've communicated in the past. 
Um, please like us on, friend, on Facebook. I can't even say it. It's so, um, so awkward to me. But go on to our Facebook page and see some of the meals that are posted. We're posting pictures every day of the meals that your children are being offered and being served. Those are things that we are proud to do. There's, there's been a time when, when um, child nutrition wasn't a proud profession. Well, I'll share with you that it is the best pr profession in the world to be in. To get up every morning and have the opportunity to feed children is just an incredible thing. Um, I put the Grizzly Adams picture up because I think it's funny. He does look like Celeriac, and I just think that's funny. Um, so in closing, I would love to say that the, the, the child nutrition programs in Vermont have grown to the, to the point where they are recognized nationally as leaders in our community, and in, in our industry. And that is true of so many things that are happening in Vermont. Um, and I feel that the people in this room have the energy and have the experience and have the resources to make it better and to change things that are happening um, all over the world and uh, I'm sorry, all over the country and certainly all over our state. Um, I, again, really do appreciate the opportunity to have had your attention and I am really humbled to be here with you all today. Thank you so much.